moment yourself. We have a very special guest speaker today. Her name is Sydney Hamilton, and I'm going to share with you a little bit about her. She is a mechanical engineer at the Boeing Company in El Segundo, California. So she's up very early, ladies, to meet with you. So it's eight o'clock where she is and 11 o'clock our time, where she leads a cross-functional team in the development of satellite reflectors. Reflectors are critical mechanisms on satellites that redirect radio frequencies, such as your GPS, to desired areas. Throughout Sydney's career, she has had the opportunity to design 3D printed satellite parts. Very cool. Deliver structural repairs to Boeing's fleet of 767 and 777 air airplanes, as well as analyze the 777X folding wing tip, the first commercial airplane with mechanical folding wings. As a passionate advocate for recognizing the power within diversity, Sydney founded the Boeing Generations to Generations Employee Research Group, which is dedicated to improving workplace culture, culture excuse me, across the company's rich multi-generational talent pool. Sydney brings out her passion for STEM education through her partnership with the nonprofit organization, Dramatic Results. Serving as vice president on the board of directors, Sydney has championed the success of extracurricular programs designed to bring STEM through art, which is STEAM, into the hands of underserved youth. Sydney received dual degrees in mathematics and aerospace engineering from Spelman College oh. and the University of Michigan, respectively. She also studied nuclear engineering while abroad in Zaman, Fujian, China. Outside of work, Sydney can be found scuba diving, salsa dancing, or cooking, and especially eating new cuisines with friends. Without further ado, let's give Sydney a big virtual welcome this morning. <laughs> well, thank you for that introduction. It's so exciting to be here with everyone this morning. Like we said, it's been crazy times, but the fact that we can be together and have a little bit of fun is great. And since you gave me a great introduction there, um, y'all shout out to Spelman. I saw the, the whoop whoop back there. So uh, <laughs> great, great school. I won't go too deep into uh, the my own introduction, except that yesterday I just uh, started my first job, first promotion. I'm now a manager of structural saddle or structures, aerospace structures. So I'm really excited about that. And really all that means is there are so many different aspects of the aerospace industry. And I'm really excited that today we all get to be rocket scientists and learn about the different aspects of aerospace. So I'm managing work like spacecrafts. So when you think of satellites, when you think of how we're talking right now, we couldn't do it without Wi-Fi. So we're working on the analysis of how do we get that in the air? Then airplanes, we're looking at how do we make this fly safely? What do we do? What have we done? And what do we do moving forward? We're also looking at spare parts, 3D printed parts, which maybe a little bit later, I'll go grab a 3D printed part that I have over in my living room. But for now, when you think about space, or at least when I do, I'm thinking, what are stars made of? What else is out there? Where are we actually sending these rocket ships to? And can a satellite fall out of the sky? Scary thought? The answer is, it won't reach your backyard. So you don't have to worry about it. There's not a chance. So I'm just excited to share my passion and for us to learn a little bit about rocket science. So first, before we get started, let's go over some vocabulary words. Um, let's see, sharing this worksheet. Y'all, I'm gonna tell you, I am not, here we go. And share. Can you all see this? We can. Okay, perfect. So, I want to start off with 
What are the four forces of flight, which you can see below? Dun, 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 dun. They are thrust, drag, lift, and weight. So those are the vocabulary words that we're gonna talk about before we even start creating our balloon rockets. Um, it's very important to understand these concepts to be a rocket scientist because this is how you make things fly. And this is the calculations that we're doing and the number crunching. And so let's start with those. Does anyone know what a force is? Oops. And if not, that's okay, because that's what we're here to learn. Um, so something that acts on the minute thing. Exactly. Perfect. See, y'all are already rocket scientists. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so a force is a push or pull on an object. So it's what happens when one object interacts with another one. So a great example of that is a soccer ball. If you are out playing soccer and you kick the ball, you're that's a type of force. Um, can anyone else think of any other examples of force? Okay, well, another example of a force is if you were to push something, you're per putting a force on an object. So then we think of thrust. So thrust is what a what an aircraft uses to actually move forward. So the way an engine actually works is you have this big object and it's pulling in a ton of air. So when those blades are spinning, it's actually just pulling in a ton of air, getting pressurized on the inside, and then it is blasting out of the back. So it's moving in this direction to make the airplane move in this direction. Let me see. So when you have this airplane, my little box will be my airplane. When you have this airplane and the engines on it, you have this force being pushed backwards, which is making it move in this direction. And that's also Isaac Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. So if you think about your balloon, and you think of air as your fuel, if I let go of this, which way is it gonna go? You guys can just point. Is it gonna go this way or this way? Right, exactly. That's thrust. It is being thrusted forward and it has air pushing out this way and it's making the balloon act in an opposite direction. Isaac Newton's third law of motion. Uh, another example of equal but opposite reaction is when you dribble a basketball. So if you're dribbling a basketball really hard, then the basketball is going to come back with a lot of force. It's going to hit the ground hard and it's going to come back hard. But if you like dribble softly and very gently, not only is it easier for somebody to steal the ball from you, but it doesn't come back as hard. It doesn't go up as high because you're not, it's giving the opposite, the equal reaction or equal force that you're giving it. Um, now for drag, we saw the balloon thrust forward. There's actually another thing that's happening while it's in the air and that's the drag force. So has show of hands, have, has anyone been in a pool, large body of water? Have you ever tried running? And did you move a lot slower than you usually would? So that is drag. That's actually called water resistance, which is a type of drag. Airplanes are actually experiencing that in the air. So when the, the engines have to be moving, the air has to be moving fast enough out of an engine to overcome that drag force. In sciencey terms, like we use air as a liquid. And so I kind of think of ourselves as SpongeBob when we're calculating for airplanes because you're trying to see how much resistance is happening and how much thrust do you need to overcome that. And so, and if you haven't been in a pool, think about being in a bathtub and moving your hand back and forth. 
it, it, that drag, that resistance that you're feeling. And so that's a tangible way to think about it. And lift. So you have, have you seen how airplanes are kind of curved, like the large wings are on it and they're, they have like this really nice shape. Next time you look at an airplane, you'll see this curve now, but the wings are curved to create lift. So as the air is going towards the wing, so you have your wing, as the air is going towards it, a force is created under the wing to lift. That's why your cars really don't fly because they don't have the wings to create this lift force. So it's not just the wing that's doing it, it's the lift force. And basically lift is a force that opposes the weight. And it's about the speed of air and how it creates a pressure difference. And it's hard to explain unless I am not telling you to practice this at home. And <laughs> But I may or may not have had my hand out of the window and just felt the air against my hand. And when my hand goes this way, I have it le leaned in this direction, it gets pushed up and that's lift. And when you have it down, it gets pushed down as you're going in the car. So you just kind of feel it. And that's the lift force that you're feeling. Funny enough, lift can be in a negative direction too. But yeah, when air is pushing against your hand and it just automatically starts to rise, you're feeling lift. And that's what the airplane wings do. Another example could be a kite. When you put the kite in the air and it starts to fly, that's lift amongst other forces, but we won't go into that today. And then lastly, you have weight. Weight is actually the force of gra gravity on an object. So I imagine most of us have been on a scale, seen a scale, and you get a number out. If you wanted to quickly change weight classes because you're a boxer, you could actually just go to the moon and you would weigh about half of what you weigh now because there's less gravity on the moon. And so your weight actually will change depending on what planet you're on. But unfortunately here on earth, you know, it's gonna stay about the same <laughs> unless, unless we uh, go to the gym. And so weight is something that I think we've all been familiar with. So that's that part. So now that we have our vocabulary, are there any questions? All right, we'll keep moving. Oh, actually, we'll go back to this first question. Can anyone predict how we're putting all these objects together that we have, our bloom, or what is our hypothesis, I, I should ask? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think you're doing with all these tools? Don't be afraid to come off mute, ladies. Okay. So we have a straw. We have a balloon. We have our cargo. Well, we'll say our satellite on our rocket. And we're going to put all these things together. So let's start building. The first thing we're going to do is grab our string. And I'm gonna get out. We'll grab our string and we'll cut it. What you wanna do is make sure you have something to tie the string to. So that part I probably should have put in the instructions. So I do apologize for that. If not, you can watch. I'm gonna start by tying it around a doorknob. And then I'll tie it around. This is the part that I always end up messing myself up on is Remembering to make sure I put the, str the straw on the string before I tie it. So you have it tied to one end of something. 
you put your straw or your string in the straw. And hopefully you don't struggle as much as I do on this part. Penny, there's a question in the chat about how much string do they need? So this is the fun part. You can, as long as you wanna make it. So for me, I like to have a little bit more distance because what we're doing is we're making a rocket. So I wanna make sure that there is enough room for it to move and for us to measure. So as much space as you can give yourself is the length I would give, I would do. So I have the length of this, uh, this monitor. So that's what we're gonna do today. Sounds good. Now, Cameron, did you have your supplies with you today? Yes, ma'am, they're right next to me. It's just hard to like, I tried to get up and get them, sorry. Okay. I just wanna make sure you weren't getting left behind. You put the string in the straw, right? So yeah, you wanna have your, your straw on the string before you finish tying it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do some retying. Trust me, I've had to do that before. <laughs> so we put this end of the string in our straw or we put the end that we tied in our straw? So you wanna tie one end first and then put the straw on and then tie the other end. So you wanna make sure that you can, your straw can move along your string. I don't know if you can see this or if I need to come a little, does the camera need to come a little closer? Yes. I'm gonna take that as a no. And just in case you can't see what Sydney's doing that well, if you change your view to speaker, that way you can just see her, her uh, camera uh, versus everyone else's. If you just click on the view on the right hand side of the screen and then click on speaker. And I'll even see if I can scoot up this table just a bit. So what do we do at the other end of the string? Say that one more time. What do we do with the other end of the string? So you're gonna wanna tie it to- Tie it around something else. <laughs> something else, like the chair that you're sitting in. So like, I have a doorknob and a lamp because that's what I have uh, <laughs> right now. And so you could do the doorknob in your chair. You could do the doorknob and another person if, <laughs> if they want to. Um, doorknob table. Sydney, do you mind if we take the uh, sharing off? That way we can see you better. Oh, oh, oh sorry. That might help because I'm still getting some uh, messages about they can't see that well. I If you just stop the screen sharing and I can stop it. So I just went ahead. That and would be great. Yeah, I'll do it. All right. All right, there we go. Excellent. Okay. Sorry about that, ladies. And if they put her on the speaker view, like you said, you could see her a lot better. Mm -hmm. so I'll... If you pin her video, you can see her better too. Perfect. So here's the straw. And I have it tied to my lamp, and I have it tied to the doorknob. So this is the first step. I'll give you ladies a second. No, mom. Does does the straw does the string have to be straight? Uh, it's best if it's straight, but if not, we can okay. definitely still work with it. 
Okay. We just have to make sure the balloon is pointing in a certain direction if it's if it's a little if there's an incline. Okay. Okay. All right. Looks like we we've got it. Uh, got the uh, strings tied. Does yes. everybody have it? We need more time, ladies. I got mine. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you're good to go. All right. And I'll keep going over. I'll keep, I'll go over this part a couple of times so that we can all uh, catch up. But the next thing you're going to want to do for this experiment is for the first round, we're not using any cargo. We just wanna see how does the balloon work? What happens when we put different amount of air in the balloon, just how far is it gonna go? So take your balloon and take your tape. And what you're gonna do is put five, no, we'll say three breaths into your balloon. So and that's it. And for me, it helps if I twist it and hold it. And now you want to tape your balloon. Uh, let me yeah that looks good it's three breaths Cameron that looks good okay perfect I was like oh no I can't see from my yeah screen. I can see it it's okay <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I recommend putting two pieces of long tape and if this is hard you can rip off the tape first and then tape your balloon on but tape your balloon to the straw Do this. Thumbs up. Is everyone still working on it? Yeah, everybody's still working uh, on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let the air out of mine. Move my chair out of the way. And then re So when we tape our balloon to a straw, how do you want us to tape it? I'll show you. So I have my balloon taped like so. I just put two pieces of tape to hold the balloon on. You know how to tie balloon? So I wouldn't tie it because we're gonna let it go and let it fly. Okay. So we'll just hold it until everyone's ready. I'm gonna cheat because I have these little paper clips. I'm gonna paper clip it closed. Oh yeah. There's a question. I'm sorry. What was the question? Was that you, Cameron? Ladies, what you might want to do is you might want to put the tape on the balloon, uh, kind of like what she did. Have the let's go ahead and tape the balloon and on, over the straw and then try to blow it up from there. I think that might make it easier for you um, because you're not actually going to tie the balloon. 
-hmm. The balloon is something like an aircraft in this situation. This is the aircraft. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm well. How are you? This I'm you doing regular well. Regular tape or duct tape? Um, What's your question? I would say if you have duct tape, that would be great. But regular tape will work. Okay, so you got regular tape. So yeah, we're taping it on like so. If you blow it up and then put the tape on, that works and we can re-blow it up and then you can let the air out and we can re-blow it up as we keep going. So, I'm losing air. It's easier to see. So yeah, straw and then the two pieces of tape and then you have the balloon. Under or over the straw? I'm sorry. Mm. Under the straw, I think? Yeah. While everyone's doing that, I'm going to go grab my 3D printed part to show you. So keep working. Or... I'll be back. Are we taping it to the straw? Yes. So you want to tape it to the straw, like so. So, like, here's my straw the little swirly thing, and then taping it right over so that the balloon sticks to it. So essentially what we're doing is giving this balloon direction. When you blow up a balloon, it flies all over the place because there's nothing that's keeping it straight. For airplanes, there's an aerodynamic shape with the wings, so you know how to move it forward. Same with rockets. They have the fins on them to help give them the direction that they're going in. And in this case, we're using a straw and string as our guidance and direction. <laughs> so I'll be right back. So while we're waiting, and I'll show it again, because I know multitasking is difficult. <laughs> but this is one of the 3D printed parts I made for a satellite. It's made out of aluminum. And this is actually a bracket that show that transfers electricity. And this used to be 300 parts. But after doing 3D printing, we were able to make it into one part. So it's much lighter and it looks a lot cooler. <laughs> so you get to make a lot of cool designs and do a lot of fun work in the aerospace industry. And you probably wouldn't look at this and think it's a part that's actually on a satellite. Obviously not this one, but <laughs> it's cool. And my friends come over, they're like, what's that on your table? I'm like, oh, it's a bracket. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so it's you have a little desk that you work on, like kind of like a paperweight. Is that how you have it on your desk to show off? It's actually too light to be a paperweight. I've tried oh, it. It's not light. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, this is like, this is like <laughs> nothing. So I haven't found a good use for it. So ladies, this is the shape. If you can think of something creative and useful, you let me know. <laughs> I was like, hmm. but other other than a showpiece, I haven't figured out how to make it useful outside of a satellite. It looks like it could be a place you might put some potpourri in it. <laughs> hmm. If I if I put it this way and have my potpourri yeah. on the inside, yeah. or some balls <laughs> or something, mm. they put some, some Christmas flowers. Mm -hmm. Put some Christmas balls in it. <laughs> okay, festive. Yeah. All right, ladies. Are we, do we have our balloons attached? Okay. So, mine lost a little bit of air, um, but for the most part, it has three breaths in it. So you take it all the way to the end and then 
three, two, one, you let go. And you see how far it went. So for me, three breaths almost went all the way to the end. Because we're rocket scientists, we measure everything and we want to get our numbers. And we'll see how far, how far this went. 49. And I'm going to measure, you want to measure from the same spot every time. So I'm going to measure to the end of the straw that's closest to the doorknob instead of the end of the straw that's closest to the lamp. So if you measure from the same place every time, then you can consistently compare your results. If not, you might get varying numbers. So mine went 62 inches. How far did some people's make it all the way to the end or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when there's nothing on it, so easy. It just flies, it goes straight. If we put 10, it's going to go all the way to the end faster. So the next question is, what happens when we put cargo on it? In this case, this is my green satellite. What happens? Is it going to go slower? Is it going to go faster? What are, what's our hypothesis when we start adding weight to it? Slower. All right. We all want to test this out. So grab your cargo. If you don't have a box, then you can find something, pencils, anything you have around the house and that your parents approve of you using. Let's be very clear. <laughs> and you can tape it to this balloon. So I'm going to blow this up again and then tape it to it. For me, it's easier when I blow it up to tape it, but it may just see what works best for you. I recommend putting three breaths in again so that we can compare. How do we take the box? So I'm about to do the same thing. For me, it's a little bit easier if I have the balloon blown up. And just like the balloon to the straw, taping the box to the balloon. So I have, I'm gonna add an additional one right here. Do you have a couple of pencils? Yeah, okay. If you, the fun, the fun thing you can do is use different amounts of pencils with the same amount of breath to see the difference of at what point does it not go as far or it goes further with this many, but not this many. So I would start off with a small number of pens and pencils or a small number of, if you have extra straws, things that have a little bit more weight would be better, but anything you can tape to it. Mine is actually a tea box. I just took out all of the tea and covered it with tape. So it's easier to see. So I used a tea box for mine. Um, 
Yeah, if you have any old little boxes from, if you had Band-Aids and you ran out, you can use like the Band-Aid box, but anything that will add weight. I've done my darndest to try to make this sit like this, but uh, thanks to gravity, it always sits this way. <laughs> I'll adjust the camera a little bit. I am actually loving seeing the young rocket scientists uh, getting this experiment together. Very nice. Yeah, that's fine, Sydney. Sarah's ready. What Morgan and Kendall, how are you ladies doing? A thumbs up? Okay, good. And Cameron looks like she's still working and joining us might have stepped away. So all right. I see some ready. <laughs> I see some balloons going. All right. Make sure you have your measuring tape ready. Again, we've only put three breaths in. Take it all the way to the end so that it starts in the same place as your other one did. Remember, for me, if that is a message to me, I ask that you say that out loud because I'm so far and my eyesight is not that great. <laughs> so remember, before it went 68 inches with three breaths. So does it look like everyone's ready? Give you a second. Okay, so let it go in three, two, one. I don't gotta... How did it go for anyone else? I didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere? <laughs> I sunk, like it fell. <laughs> so because I wanna get my numbers right and measure. All right, so mine went about eight and a half. So previously it was 62 inches. Now it's eight and a half. Were any of you surprised that it went almost nowhere by comparison to the last time? 
because I think that was all, that was my biggest surprise was I thought it would at least go somewhere near, but it's amazing how weight affects aircrafts or in this case, a rocket. So for rockets, I want to say per pound, it costs $120,000. So when we talk about needing to do lightweight objects like this, where you can hold it with your pinky, it's important because weight matters. And it's a couple hundred dollars per pound. I want to say it was like a thousand about per pound for aircrafts. Fuel is expensive and it's a resource that is non-renewable. So we're looking for ways to be greener for that reason. So I just wanted to point out how much weight can affect an aircraft. So when you want to think about efficiency, how do I use less gas? The first thing you want to think about is, can I make this any lighter than it already is? All right, so now we've seen what happens with three breaths. Does, will, does anyone have a number of breaths we want to try to try to make it go just as far? All right, we'll just increment our way up. Everyone put in six breaths. Five. And five. You said five? Did I hear five? All right, let's do five breaths and see how far it goes. My handy measuring tape, you know, nice scarf on a winter day. <laughs> Very nice scarf. <laughs> Maybe not effective, but you know. <laughs> All right. Look for a thumbs up when everyone's all set up. It looks like uh, the ladies had taken the tape off and are putting it back on. Is that correct, ladies? Okay, Morgan. Okay, Morgan's ready. Uh, what about? Okay, Sarah's working. Join us. Ready. Say one more time, Morgan. I took the tape off of Jane. She's not ready. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So I'm let my air out real quick. And you ladies, let me know. I left my little my little cheat sheet here. And it may be helpful after you get it taped on there this time, just leave leave it on the string. Leave the straw and the balloons on there because uh, you can just blow it up from there. <laughs> all right looking good okay ready to go i see almost ready over here oh we're looking good everyone All right, here we go. All 
All right, and on a countdown, three, three, two, and one. Okay. With two more extra breaths, look at the difference. Lauren's didn't go nowhere. I think she did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, for me, it went 39 inches. If it did not go anywhere, now you're, the thing that you want to think about, and we're thinking, of course, as rocket scientists, is, well, how much fuel do I need to go? Because initially we thought, hey, five breaths is enough fuel. That should take off. But in this case, there's a lot of resistance or drag that's happening with the straw and the string. So it has to overcome that. And the more weight you have, the harder it is it's gonna be for it to take off. And how heavy, yeah, looking at the weight, well, how heavy is it? How much more fuel do I need? And so that's a lot of different variations that you can look at when doing this experiment. This is embodying what it's like to be a rocket scientist. You're trying to figure out, okay, how much weight is ideal? How much fuel is ideal? And the weight can be passengers. Okay, so we're, we're sending astronauts to space. How much thrust do I need? How many breaths in your balloon do you need to make it take off? So there's so many different variations. If there's things around the house that you want to grab and try that are different, again, with permission, <laughs> then that's what I encourage everyone to, to try and experiment with. Did we want to do another round with, just one more round with more breaths to see if we can get it to take off and then we can wrap it up? Or do, or do you guys wanna, or do you ladies want to continue this experiment at home and then share your results? And uh, I'm sure that information will get back to me to let me know how many breaths did it take for you? How much weight did you have? Can we do 12 breaths? You wanna do 12? All right. All right, let's go. So six breath or five breaths got me to thirty nine inches. Do we think that? 12 will make it all the way to the end. When you do an experiment, you want to have a hypothesis, a prediction. What are you, what are you trying to get happen? So I know for some of us, 12 breaths is, I actually just wanted to move. Is that enough fuel? So your hypothesis is adding more fuel, adding five, 12 instead of five will make my rocket take off. For me, my hypothesis for my setup is 12 breaths will get me all the way to the land. So we'll see. Do you want us to add something on top of it? Do, you, do I want you to add? add something like this. I heard crunchy crunch. Oh, yeah, okay. you can add something onto it, Morgan. Yes. Oh. She was asking about the cargo. Yeah, you, okay. this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it to move now with the cargo on it with the 12 breaths. Absolutely. So I have as much cargo as you like, and then we can let it take off. So I'll show you with mine while you all are working. All right, you know, I was just trying to make sure like the balloon wasn't gonna get so big. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is getting this is getting pretty big. So I have 12 breaths in my balloon. And I don't know. I 
half of the recording is going to be me uh, doing the limbo over here. <laughs> I, I think Morgan's, are you ready, Morgan? The thumbs up? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know. She's still working. Cameron, I can't see. I can see you now. Are, are you ready to? Almost. Okay. All right. I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right, countdown in three, two, one. Ooh, so close. So close. So did everyone move further? Did it move at all? I think mine had too much on my time. So I heard a couple of things. Some moved, maybe some didn't. Did I hear that right? Mine didn't move at all. It was too much friction. <laughs> Perfect use of vocabulary. That was fantastic. So yeah, for yours, you might say, wow, maybe I need two balloons. Is there any way for me to get two balloons together and make it take off that way? So I can almost guarantee you. Where it should be. that mine went, all right. So it went 72, just a little bit short of the end. It had a couple more inches before it made it all the way to the end. So for me, for my hypothesis, which was 12 breaths would get me all the way to the end of the string, my hypothesis was incorrect. And that's okay. That's what happens when you are doing experiments. You're learning what var variables and variables are things like the size of your balloon, how much weight you're using, um, what kind of string do you have? Lots of different things can give you so many different results. And so when you're working on your hypothesis, you continue to refine, you continue to make it better now I know 12 breaths doesn't work. So I'm gonna keep that information because that's important for me to know and remember as I'm moving forward. Here, I'm gonna say, hmm, I'm gonna come up with a new hypothesis. It's super close, so maybe I'll just do 16 15. next time. You said do? 14. 15. 14? 15. 15. 15, all right. <laughs> My next hypothesis, well, 12 didn't work, all right. I got a lot of information from that. I learned it. Now let's apply what we learned. And we said 15, we'll do 15 and hope this balloon doesn't pop and hope that, it, and, then, and then hope that it makes it all the way to the end. I think that was 15. I just didn't move my thumb. Okay. We'll see. And I'm gonna let it go in three, two. Hey, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. See, I don't even think I brought my did I bring my clip? Mm -hmm.
All right, nobody get lightheaded blowing up these balloons either. Take a break if you need it. <laughs> these balloon rockets look good. All right. How are my other rocket scientists doing? I see thumbs up. And um, I see one abandoned rocket. So <laughs> we will keep going. All right. So in three, Two, one. So from the end, there are literally three inches before it actually made it to the end. As you can see, as you continue to do your experiments and you continue to learn about your materials and your tools, it gets better. It gets even closer to the result that you want. And so you see a lot of trial and error and a lot of variations. I might try a different amount of weight, like I said before, or different string just to get a better result or the result that I'm looking for. So being a scientist, all types of scientists, it's a lot of a lot of different iterations. And what I mean by that is a lot of a lot of different ways that you're executing or doing your experiment. Because I might learn something and see something I didn't see before every single time. So did yours actually move this time? <laughs> From Morgan, it moved, but it didn't move a lot. Okay, so it did move this time. So now you're seeing progress. Like I said, you might have to grab two balloons. You might have to do something lighter. And so that's the fun part of the experiment. So I know we're reaching about, I actually have not looked at a clock. Oh yeah, we're at about an hour. You said what? It's 12.03. 12.03, thank you. Actually, it's 9.03 here. Oh. <laughs> I'm in, so for everyone, I am in Los Angeles, California. That is where I live and I work out here, like I said, on satellites previously, but now working on all aerospace structures. And it's really, really cool. I was surprised to learn how many aerospace companies are in Southern California. And so there's like a hub out here, here in Los Angeles, Southern California area. Huntsville, Alabama is another aerospace hub. Seattle, Washington, DC, so many different cool places to live. And um, I'm actually originally from Nashville, Tennessee, born and raised in Dallas, Texas. So I have been with school in Atlanta, Georgia at Spelman studied abroad in Shum in China. So I, I, I move and I travel. I've always felt like, well, my family's always a plane flight away and they love to come visit me in California. Let me tell you, <laughs> I thought that they wanted to visit me, but then my parents came in and then they were like, you should take a nap, sweetheart. And when I woke up, they were gone. And so was my car. <laughs> when I got back, I was like, young lady and young man, where have you been? They were like, we were just wanted to see LA. So traveling is fun. Aerospace, I consider it all one big thing. But yes, yeah, so thank you ladies for being a rocket scientist with me today. And it's been so much fun. I'm going to refine my hypothesis with what I have now. We tried 15. I'm going to make sure my balloon can take 
more breaths of air than that and then <laughs> and then try out some different variations so i hope that at home you're able to do that as well and let us know how many it took for you to either get it moving or get it to the distance that you wanted it to get to and say hey i had to do four different ways in order to get my result i'm i would love to hear back and see that from anyone so you can put that message me on my instagram csidsor or message your wonderful leaders that i want to thank for having me here today i really appreciate it i had a really great time and let them know hey i tried it at home some more and i got it to work and i got this to happen so i appreciate everyone's time if you have any questions i can about me my, about aerospace industry or about this experiment go ahead are you related to alexander hamilton you know it's funny i tell people that thank you <laughs> i'm like that's my great 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 uncle is what i tell everyone <laughs> and but no not that i'm aware of <laughs> but i like to pretend and then i say the the play was about me not him <laughs> i love the musical that was very good exactly that's what i'm like I was like, I, I was an inspiration. That's why he did the hip hop. He wanted to show our relation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that is my, my pretend answer is yes. The truth is not that I'm aware of. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Sydney. We uh, really appreciate you today. Um, everybody gave you a nice virtual clan clap and please do it again if you uh, just in case she missed it. Um, we really enjoyed you today and I wanted to give uh, Sydney one kudos that you guys may not know about but Sydney was actually featured in Marie Claire magazine so she is she's something uh, very special. Um, and she made time to come and speak to you all this morning, even though there's a time difference. And so I just want to again say thank you so much. Uh, when I reached out, I'm so grateful that you made the call. And what better way for us to end uh, this year with you as our last speaker of the year. So thank you so much. We welcome you to come back again, Sydney. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. So nice you. meeting you. And uh, congrats on being a rocket scientist for today and now moving forward because you have the vocabulary to do so. <laughs> awesome. All right. Have a good one, everyone.